Good day. It's the 12th annual BC Lung Association Air Quality Health Workshop. I'm Veda Peters with the British Columbia Lung Association. I have with me Dr. Martin Wax from the RAND Corporation in Los Angeles. And I have some questions about trending towards the new mobility. In what ways does transportation affect individual and public health? Well, transportation affects public health in many, many ways. Um, the use of automobiles produces air pollution. The use of automobiles produces greenhouse gases, which will ultimately affect uh, public health be because of changing um, sea levels. Um, and very importantly, the use of automobiles creates deaths and injuries due to safety issues for, for those in automobiles who crash into one another, who crash into stationary objects, uh, but also for bicyclists and pedestrians who have confrontations with vehicles. So what changes have we seen in mobility patterns over the last 30 years? Mm -hmm. uh, in the, well, changes in mobility patterns and changes in the relationship between mobility and health are not necessarily identical. Um, people are traveling less um, in cities by motor vehicle, by individual driving of a motor vehicle, and people are traveling more by walking, cycling, and the use of public transport. That has happened in the last 15 or 20 years, um, and it, we believe that it is going to be a continuing trend, though we're not completely certain of that. If the price of motor fuel continues to, uh, to drop, there could be a reversion to more driving if uh, densities at the suburban fringe continue to be low and people move to suburban areas, there could be more driving. But in the centers of cities, the trend is toward more walking, cycling, um, and reliance upon information exchanges through um, technology like uh, computers and smartphones um, and less movement to achieve communication with one another. Is there a trend that's one, one trend that's more exciting than the others? Well, most people get excited when we talk about the, the potential of automated vehicles coming soon so that um, you can actually um, not worry about parking. You, the vehicle drops you at, at the destination and goes off and take someone else or parks at, at a remote location. Of course, those kinds of uh, Sunday supplement or science fiction images are coming true to some extent, and our excitement about them, I think, may exceed the, the, uh, their proximity in time. I think it may take 30 or 40 years to see a large penetration of automated vehicles whereas um, some of the media are reporting that it's right around the corner. Are any of these changes driven by a, a person wanting improved public health or improved air quality? Uh, certainly, the regulation of vehicles um, to achieve cleaner fuels and have cleaner engines and greater fuel efficiency is driven by a desire for greater public health. Certainly, the use of seat belts, the inclusion of airbags, um, and the um, increasingly present in vehicles, uh, technological assists like lane keeping and distance regulation between the, you and the vehicle in front of you, all of those things are clearly motivated by concerns about health. We are reducing traffic fatalities at a very dramatic rate, and that's very important. So given what's happened over the last 30 years, what do you see happening in the next 30 years? That, of course, it's, it's always easier to, to use hindsight than foresight. Um, I think that in the coming 30 years, there'll be greater reliance upon the integration of information and travel. So, for example, we see in the presence of services like Lyft and Uber and Sidecar the ability to travel pretty efficiently without 
driving your own vehicle as a result of better information as to where the vehicle is, how much longer it'll be before it picks you up, and, and the integration of payment into an electronic system. So it becomes simpler than the old-fashioned use of a taxi, and it becomes more attractive than, than driving oneself. I think that trend toward um, social media linkages with movement, uh, with transport, um, is a very promising one. And it encourages people who don't rely upon an individually owned and operated automobile to consider a wider range of alternatives, um, including walking and the use of public transport. And, and what are the potential implications for health of these projected changes? Well, there's clearly a relationship between um, obesity, between um, um, heart disease and uh, sedentary activity, and among our most sedentary activities are driving alone in a comfortable car for a long time. So um, medical personnel clearly recognize that people who come for medical care by transit, by walking, by cycling, are generally in better condition than those who are driving uh, from their home to medical care. So um, a shift toward walking, bicycling, um, is clearly in, in, in the interest of, of improved health. So, and improved health obviously has an effect on the bottom line health care chunk of the budget. Indeed it does. It, it has a, uh, an effect on life expectancy, on days lost, uh, pro productive days lost at work uh, because of illness, and, and all of those things are, are related. Um, it's also not insignificant that we are regulating fuels and engines to a greater extent, and so air pollution is declining. Um, at the same time I say that, it, it should also be noted that we are becoming more dependent upon goods movement, on the delivery of packages to our front door, um, on the distribution of food and clothing and other necessities of life, and the collection of waste in our cities by heavy trucks, and they are not as clean, uh, they, and the trend is toward more dependence upon them. So um, um, there, there's a need, I think, in the next 30 years to be as aggressive at regulating goods movement vehicles as we have been with passenger movements, uh, vehicles for passenger movement over the last 30 years. Unintended consequences, always. <laughs> Get yeah, less people, more more trucks. Yes. Very interesting. Thank you very much for your insights. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. My pleasure.